Now, one thing that I would be remiss if I did not comment on today is that, boy, Trump's press conference today, he gave it to the media with both barrels and did not apologize. And the sheer spectacle of it, I have to be honest, gave me a great deal of pleasure. Like, I, I enjoyed watching him tear into the media because they are corrupt, because they are constantly trying to give the worst possible interpretation of the data, the worst possible interpretation of the news. They're constantly trying to cast Trump as the, the megalomaniac bad guy. I mean, for Pete's sake, the other day the media was actually digging into whether or not Trump was going to be making money off of uh, hydro, uh, hydro... What is it? Chloroquine. <laughs> I'll use the common name. I wanted to sound smart. It didn't work. So I'm just going to use the common name, the, the uh, hydrochloroquine drug that he was touting. Look, they, they did find and they did uncover this. And I know that this is super shocking to people who are, are fans of Trump that he did actually have stock in a company that creates this, what, 50-year-old drug, hydrochloroquine. They found out that he did have money in it. And if this thing takes off and the stocks double, he stands to make, like, about $2,000. So, I mean, obviously, that's the reason that Trump was pushing this thing. That's the reason that Trump is hoping this is the new miracle drug that fixes COVID-19 because he has, like, dozens of dollars in, uh, put down on it, and he might make, you know, a couple thousand if this thing go really takes off. So, yeah, a billionaire like Trump, he's real concerned with whether or not hydrochloroquine winds up being an, a new miracle drug that everybody uh, is administering to people. I mean, th the way that the media has gone after this guy on a number of different occasions, claiming that uh, he's the one, he's the reason that this idiot that drank a uh, fish tank cleaner that had a similar name to it, and then his wife, who went on all of the talk shows blaming President Trump, turns out that she's actually literally a Democrat donor, the way that they have just handled this whole thing and trying to make Trump out to be the bad guy and score political points in the middle of a pandemic is sickening. And I think that that's the reason that Trump today decided, you know what, screw it. I'm, I'm done with the kid gloves. I'm done trying to, to pander and, and be the nice guy and try to be the adult in the room. So I'm just coming after them. And I'm tired of the media trying to paint what I talk about in this media conference and, and trying to paint that in a negative light. So I'm going over their heads. I'm going straight over their whole heads. I'm doing it on the medium where people, the American people are most likely to be listening to me and listening directly to me. And I'm going to take this message that the media has been unfair to me and has been unfair in their coverage of the virus and has tried to intentionally cause panic for no reason and harp on political divides, as opposed to talking about how, really, we're working together with the Democrats and, and having decent relationships with a lot of Democrat governors, we're going to blow that narrative up and we're going to do it right in their face so the American people can see it. Is it a strong political move? Honestly, I don't know. Because there's two different ways that this could really be taken. There is the one theory that because you're having a lot of people that are not necessarily Trump boosters, they're either they voted for Trump, but they're not like married to the guy and they could go a different way. Or you have people that are just kind of independents in the middle that are watching this just because they want the information that they're going to get on the coronavirus and, and how that our status is going in the country that they're watching that that aren't necessarily people that are just rah-rah Trump cheerleaders. There's a couple ways they could take this. First, they could look at it and say, well, that's not presidential at all. And the danger of people doing that is that they don't understand that these daily pre press briefings are daily press briefings. In other words, there are a lot of people that mistakenly kind of assume that these things don't happen all the time. And that the president doesn't routinely defend himself against people that are criticizing him, be they in the media or not, at these press briefings. That's part of the reason that they're here, is to give the White House a platform on which to voice their positions, explanations for their policies. So what he did 
if you're ignoring the tone and just looking at the raw facts that he put out there, defending why the president took the position that he did, explaining why he did what he did and when he did it, those things are not things that are uncommon to these press briefings. They are on a bigger platform because of this crisis. There are more people that are watching them because of this crisis. And the president is doing it himself as opposed to having a surrogate coming up and speaking on his behalf, which is not usually what happens. The president doesn't usually attend these things on a daily basis. But they do happen on a daily basis. And they are essentially the White House going out and explaining themselves, explaining policies. That's what they're supposed to be. And so it could be possible that one of these independents that we're talking about watches this doesn't understand that and thinks that these things are specifically just supposed to be about the coronavirus and go, why is Trump essentially trying to explain what his administration was doing in response to this thing on a medium that is supposed to be reserved specifically for information on coronavirus? Now, of course, they're wrong in that because that's not what these things are, nor is it what they were ever designed to do. The White House basically just repurposed them for that during this time, but the independent person that is watching these things for the first time in their life probably doesn't realize that. And so that's one way that a more independent person or or maybe even somebody that voted for Trump but is kind of on the fence as to whether they will this time is watching it. And so that they could take it in a very negative light, not understanding that context. It is also possible and I think that this is at least likely for a decent amount of these independents. That they don't necessarily have a deep-seated distrust for the media, even if they know that they're biased. And they don't necessarily have a ton of trust in Trump. And they don't just assume that whatever he says, it must be true. They're a little bit more open-minded than that. And they watch this spectacle and they go, oh my gosh. Look at what the media has been doing to this guy. I didn't even realize, because I've just been watching the press briefings and not been watching, you know, I don't keep CNN on the background in my house every night or MSNBC or or whatever other mainstream media outlet. I'm not somebody that consumes news like that on a normal basis. They've really been saying all this stuff about this guy? And so maybe that sparks a little bit of curiosity. If I had to guess... I'd say that it's pretty close to down the middle. I think you're probably going to have about 60% of people taking the former and 40% taking the latter to where they're a little bit more curious and going, man, I had no idea that the media was just going after this guy and lamb blasting him on things that don't even make sense in the middle of a pandemic. I hope that more people take that position, but I'm not sure. And so it was a very bold political play by the president. It was, I think, a calculated risk that both he and his advisors knew that, yeah, this could backfire, but this also could actually gain some political ground by doing this, by going over the media's head, not letting them filter out what I'm saying or take certain things out of context or try to mislead people, which they do on a very regular basis when it comes to these press hearings. Let's go directly to the American people, speak directly to them, no filter, Tell them why the media is fooling them. And that's the reason that we're going to do it. We're going to go at them with both barrels. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I see it. And and I think that that's probably their motivation, the reason that they decided to remove the gloves and and sort of let Trump say what he wanted to. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I didn't disagree really with anything that Trump said because Well, I I say that I'm sure that there were some points of disagreement that I could have. I remember thinking a couple times, okay, Trump, it's a, you're exaggerating a little bit there. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that he's talking about, about how the media has been grossly unfair to him and how the media tried to relentlessly downplay hydrochloroquine, which it's not a miracle drug. It doesn't solve the thing, but there have been some very promising results done by medical doctors, for example, in the state of Louisiana that implemented this basically statewide and has been faring a lot better than other states that refused to. And and Trump actually jokingly, but I think that he was probably correct, saying that me mentioning it probably slowed the rollout a little bit because people didn't trust it simply because I said it. I mean, I know that he said that as a joke, but he was probably right in that. 
that there were probably governors and legislators that didn't want that to be the case just because Trump can't be right. If Trump says it, it must be a lie. That's kind of the way that they tend to operate. My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.